okay. I hope y'all ain't tired of seeing me. But uh, we got to get underway here. While you guys are in line getting autographs, doing all that fun stuff, want to do a couple of things before we bring our first guest up here to the table. Uh, I want to thank our presenting sponsor, the Home Theater Company. Make sure to stop by their booth and enter for your chance to win a Samsung LED HD TV or a Blu-ray Blu player. Also want to mention a couple other things. There's a video game truck right outside. We also got a play-by-play -play booth. Uh, each one of these different booths have uh, uh, big cardboard cutout things like you see here by the meet and greet lines where you can find out who's going to be there. But the, the legend, Gary Gerald, the G-man, he's going to be there uh, later on today, along with the other legend, Jerry Reynolds. He's going to stop by there later. Del Christie's going to be there. You're going to have a chance to do some play-by-play -play with those guys. We also, we also have a talk show booth. So if you ever wanted to sit next to me and tell me how full of crap I am, you're going to have the opportunity to get to do that in person. Carmichael Dave is going to be doing it as well. Kyle Matson is here. Uh, all of your favorite KHTK personalities are here uh, as well. I want to thank King Kong Brewery. I want to thank our friends over at California Family Fitness, the Hoblet dealerships, uh, Metro PCS, and the Quick Quack Car Wash. I want to thank them for everything uh, that they've been doing here for our first, what will definitely be annual KHTK Sports Fest. One of the things that we're going to be doing all throughout the day is different conversations up here on the main stage, a chance for us to talk to some of your favorite athletes. And the uh, first group I want to bring out here are definitely uh, some of my favorite athletes that this region has ever seen. And the first person I want to bring up, she was a coach on the 2005 WNBA championship team, the Sacramento Monarchs. Can you all make some noise for Monique Ambers? Monique Ambers, everybody. Oh, yeah, have a seat. Relax. All six, five of her. And the other person I want to bring up is one of the baddest defenders the WNBA has ever seen. She might be one of the baddest defenders that basketball has ever seen. She is a two-time Olympic gold medalist, and her jersey still hangs in the rafters of the Golden One Center. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruthie Bolton. Ruthie. Ruthie will still take you out, by the way. Don't, don't get it twisted. All right. So we're all over the internet. Everybody here in line to meet Mike and Vlade over here. And uh, Ruthie, we were talking about this yesterday on the lowdown, which you can catch, by the way, from 12 to 3 on your KHDK app that you use to get in here. We were talking about the evolution of women's basketball and how it's changed uh, since you left the league back in the early 2000s. What's the biggest difference that you've seen from when you retired to today? Well, like I said uh, yesterday, I think that um the, the, the league is very competitive. I think there's a lot of players coming out of college that are making a huge impact right away. And like I said, when we played, you know, maybe, you know, there was some dozen top, top players. But now you got 30, 40 players in WNBA that, that could hit 30, 30 points at any time. And I think that is really great for women's basketball. I enjoy watching it. Uh, Monarchs don't have a team, unfortunately, in Sacramento, but, but I really like watching the basketball, and I think it has evolved. And even college basketball, I think players are coming out of college more prepared and stuff. So, but I think the WNBA is, um, I, I think it's here to stay. And, Mo, you coached after uh, the Sacramento Monarchs shut down in, I think it was 2009. Uh, you went on to coach a little bit in New York. So you've kind of seen uh, the transition a little bit there. You were there for the, the, the beginning of the transition. What have you seen since you've left the game? I mean, the biggest thing I'll say is the skill set. Um, I'm a post player, so, of course, I, I'm attracted to the post players and watch them. Um, six, five players are not just playing under the basket anymore. Mm -hmm. You see Elena Deladon. Yeah. I mean, I think um, Lauren Jackson kind Kind of introduced it, mm -hmm. but now we have a lot of six five plus players that can dribble the ball and um, run that point position. So you're a post player, Mo, and I'm sure you're aware that the Sacramento Kings have a number of uh, high quality post players coming in, including the Sacramento Kings first round draft pick Marvin Bagley, uh, the myth, the Black Panther, Harry Giles is going to make his debut uh, this year. I'm sure the amount, especially with Harry, that you've got to see to those guys is limited. But what do you think about the evolution of the post players in the NBA? Um, well, the NBA is a little bit different because a lot of the post players like to shoot threes. Mm -hmm. They like to step out. Um, I like we to had a guy like that here, by the way. I don't know if you guys remember him. 
He loves shooting threes. I know. <laughs> so I think it opens up the, um, the key a lot more, but I would like to see him go in just a little tad bit closer. Maybe shoot some elbow jumpers. So you have a pep talk with Harry Giles. You're telling him, hey, man, stay in the block. Get him, Mo. Right. Stay, stay, stay explosive. That way, if, you know, jumpers are missed, he's there for the rebound as well. Now, another position that seems to have, uh, as basketball continues to evolve, and we always hear the term positionless basketball, uh, you had the opportunity to coach, and Ruthie, you had the opportunity to play with. You know, at the same time that the Sacramento Kings had Jason Williams, we had Tisha Pinachero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for my money, Tisha Pinachero, male or female, is one of the greatest point guards I've ever seen. She had an eye unlike anybody in her style, was very similar to Jason Wills, her, Williams. Her, her, her style was she loved Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. And, Mo, you know that she played like Magic Johnson. She wanted to make passes like Magic Johnson. How has the point guard position, or for you, Ruthie, how has the guard position evolved in this era of positionless basketball? You know, I, I think to me, when I watch WNBA now, I think that the guards are very, very competitive. And, and like I said, with Tisha, obviously, she left a huge mark in, in WNBA and broke records. And watching her play, I think now that, uh, that I don't know, for some reason, it seems like the guards are shooting a lot more threes now, just shooting threes. And I don't know it's if it's... the Steph Curry effect. I think Steph Curry effect. I know. It, it really... It, I, don't, I think Seattle, they might have had the, uh, the best uh, percentage and hit the most threes this year. And that's probably one of the reasons they won. But I think, to me, as the guards, I think now you just have players... You know, as, and driving, they got it, but I think more threes. Guards are just shooting a lot more threes. Some teams shoot like 20 a game. Now, you've been to the Olympics twice. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us about your Olympic experiences? Wow, man, it's funny. I would just, I did an interview a couple of days ago with, a, uh, with an author that writing a book on team chemistry, and she interviewed me, and I had to go back down memory lane, but it, that, that's an experience in basketball that, to me would would last a lifetime and it seemed like it was just yesterday I know that sound cliche but talking about the memories and the travel and the, the practices we had and felt like we weren't going to make it through uh, the day alive um, when you train so hard you go to the track in the morning time and you have a second practice and you feel like all the players will look at me and say what is this coach going to do because Tara they always thought we were so close and I knew her mind but the training we did she was preparing us I'm talking about there were times we feel like I don't know if we can do this but I think that's why we won in the style that we did when 60 and 0 because we trained so hard and, and those memories are amazing. I think when we what we did in 96, I think it laid an amazing foundation for women's basketball. And we knew there was a lot at stake because she told us every day, I don't care about getting a medal. We have to win the goal. Anything less than the goal, we failed. And so that stuck in our mind and we kept working hard making sure that happened. I know the Monarchs have been gone for, man, almost 10 years now. And it's really important. I, I, I really hope everybody out there, particularly those who are big Sacramento Kings fans, particularly those uh, that are younger, don't forget the legacy that the Sacramento Monarchs laid, not just uh, for basketball in Sacramento, but for women's basketball, period. When you look at the teams that have won WNBA championships, and you can start back in 97, where they had four legitimate Hall of Famers, where they had four superstars, and you can run all the way through a couple of weeks ago when the Seattle Storm won the WNBA championship. That's not what the Monarchs were. The Monarchs were a team that was virtually untouchable. Yolanda Griffith does not get the recognition she deserves yes, as a pioneer for women's yeah. basketball. Tisha yeah. Pinachero doesn't either. And the fact that this two-time Olympic gold medalist sitting next to me isn't in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame mm -hmm. is a travesty. She is one of the greatest basketball players that we've ever seen. And she's right here in Sacramento. Y'all make some noise for Ruthie Bolton Thank and you. Monique Ambers. <laughs> Yeah.